Emerald green rice patties, shimmering like liquid glass in the afternoon sun, stretched out on either side of us, seemingly endless. We were a world away from the bustling streets of Hanoi, the incessant honking of motorbikes fading into a distant memory. Our destination, a small village nestled in the mountainous region of northern Vietnam, home to the Tay minority group. We were met at the edge of the village by Pao, a young woman with a warm smile and eyes that sparkled with quiet intelligence. Her English was limited, but her gestures were welcoming, her hand resting gently on my arm as she led us through a labyrinth of narrow paths, past houses built on stilts, their wooden beams polished smooth by time and weather. Chickens clucked and scattered at our feet. Children stopped their play to stare, their fingers tracing shy patterns in the dust. We arrived at Pao's family home, a simple wooden structure perched atop sturdy stilts. A wave of heat and the intoxicating aromas of ginger, lemongrass, and chili engulfed us as we ducked beneath the low-hanging eaves. Inside, the floor was cool beneath our feet, covered with woven mats. The room was dim, lit only by the sunlight filtering in through the open doorway and the flickering flames of a small cooking fire in the corner, who greeted us with shy smiles and nods. Despite the language barrier, there was an immediate sense of warmth, of hospitality that transcended words. This was a place where life unfolded at a different pace, where time seemed to move to the rhythm of the seasons, and where strangers were welcomed with open arms and open hearts. In Vietnamese culture, the kitchen is the heart of the home, and Pao's family's kitchen was no exception. A large wooden table dominated the space, its surface already laden with bowls and platters piled high with food. This was no ordinary meal. This was a feast, a celebration of our arrival and a testament to the incredible bounty of the surrounding land. There were steaming bowls of pho. The fragrant broth simmered for hours with star anise, cinnamon, and cloves. Platters of spring rolls, translucent rice paper encasing a symphony of fresh herbs and vegetables, sat alongside bowls of dipping sauces bursting with flavor. Tangy lime, fiery chili, and rich, savory hoisin. Grilled fish, its skin crispy and glistening with chili oil, beckoned with its smoky aroma. And then there was the centerpiece, a whole roasted pig, its skin crackling and golden brown, its eyes replaced with two bright red chilies. It was a sight to behold, a symbol of abundance and generosity that took my breath away. The air hummed with a quiet reverence as Pao's father, his weathered face etched with a lifetime of laughter lines, carefully carved the pig, offering the first piece to the eldest member of the family. There was a beautiful rhythm to the meal, a sense of order and tradition that spoke volumes about the family's deep connection to their culture. Each dish was presented with a quiet pride, each bite a testament to the care and attention that had gone into its preparation. We ate with our hands, the flavors exploding on our palates, a symphony of textures and tastes that danced across our tongues. The meal was a feast for the senses, a riot of colors, aromas, and textures that left me feeling utterly overwhelmed in the best possible way. The vibrant green of the herbs, the fiery red of the chilies, the deep brown of the roasted pig. Each ingredient popped against the simple white of the bowls and platters. The air was thick with the intoxicating aromas of lemongrass, ginger, and garlic, the smoky scent of the cooking fire mingling with the sweet perfume of incense burning in the corner. The sound of chopsticks clicking against bowls provided a gentle rhythm to the meal, punctuated by the laughter of the children and the murmur of conversation in a language I couldn't understand but somehow felt like the language of home. But it was the flavors that truly captivated me. The faux broth, rich and savory with a hint of spice, warmed me from the inside out. The spring rolls, bursting with fresh herbs and crunchy vegetables, were a delightful contrast of textures, and the roasted pig, crispy on the outside, juicy and tender on the inside, was simply divine. Each dish was a revelation, a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Vietnamese people. This was food that was more than just sustenance, it was art, it was culture, it was love, all rolled into one. It was an experience that transcended language, that spoke to something deep within my soul. As the sun began its slow descent, casting long shadows across the rice paddies, we ambled out of the house, our bellies full, and our spirits soaring. The air had cooled slightly, and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves in the trees. We followed Pao and her grandfather, a sprightly man with a mischievous twinkle in his eye, down a narrow path to the rice paddies. The paddies, a patchwork quilt of vibrant green, stretched out before us, 
shimmering like liquid gold in the late afternoon light. The air was alive with the sound of crickets chirping, frogs croaking and birds singing their evening songs. We watched in fascination as I, his movements fluid and practiced, demonstrated the traditional method of rice cultivation. I moved with the grace of a dancer, my hands moving expertly as I showed how to plant the rice seedlings, my weathered face breaking into a wide grin as I explained the importance of respecting the land. There was a timeless quality to the scene, a sense that this ritual had been repeated for generations, connecting Pau and her family to their ancestors and to the land itself. The rice paddies were more than just a source of food, they were the lifeblood of the village, the source of their livelihood and their identity. As we stood there surrounded by the beauty and tranquility of this rural landscape, it was impossible not to feel a sense of peace wash over us. As the stars began to twinkle in the velvet sky, we made our way back to Pau's home, our hearts full of gratitude for the incredible hospitality that had been bestowed upon us. We had arrived as strangers but we were leaving feeling like family. The generosity of the Vietnamese people, particularly in rural communities like our village, is truly remarkable. They have so little, yet they give so freely, opening their homes and their hearts to strangers with a warmth and sincerity that is both humbling and inspiring. They find joy in the simplest of things, a shared meal, a conversation, a moment of connection. As we sat on the floor of Pau's home, sipping tea and exchanging stories through a combination of broken English and hand gestures, I couldn't help but reflect on the things that truly matter in life. It wasn't about material possessions or social status. It was about connection, about community, about the simple act of sharing what you have with others. In a world that often feels increasingly divided, there's something incredibly powerful about witnessing such genuine hospitality and kindness. It's a reminder that beneath our differences, we are all connected, and that the things that unite us are far stronger than the things that divide us. Leaving Pau's village was bittersweet. We had only spent a short time there, but it felt like we had stepped into a different world, a world where life moved at a slower pace, where traditions were honored, and where strangers were welcomed like long-lost friends. The experience left an indelible mark on my soul, a reminder that there is still so much beauty to be found in the world, so much to learn from cultures different from our own. It reignited my sense of adventure, my desire to step outside of my comfort zone and to truly connect with the people and places that make this planet so extraordinary. If you're looking for an experience that will challenge your perceptions, broaden your horizons, and nourish your soul, I urge you to venture off the beaten path and discover the hidden gems of rural Vietnam. Subscribe to my channel and follow along as we continue our journey, exploring the world one bite at a time. And be sure to share your own travel experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear about the places that have touched your heart and the people who have inspired you along the way.